Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Today we are continuing work on the tool post grinder. This is gonna be part eight. And as usual, if you haven't seen the previous parts of the video, there's a link down in the description. Today I think we're gonna get started on the motor mounting eccentric, which should be a straightforward piece of turning. I will apologize in advance, the furnace is gonna be kicking on and off today. It's uh, still before sunup on a Saturday morning and it is cold here. So there's not much I can do about that. Let's go over to the bench and take a look at the plans. This is the motor eccentric. You can see it is just a ring, uh, about 900 thousandths thick and turned to fit around the outside of the motor and to fit inside the motor clamp. Um, it's got about 80 thousandths of eccentric, which means that on the outside, when we dial this in, we'll be seeing about 160 thousandths of runout, 158 to be exact. Now, I don't want to hog this out of a solid piece of material because there's a lot of metal removal. It's going to take a long time and I have to pay for the material as well. So what I'm going to use is called DOM tubing. Now, DOM is just an acronym for drawn over mandrel, which refers to the manufacturing process, not to the material itself. The material itself is a mild steel, something like a 1020 usually. And it starts out as a flat plate. It's rolled into shape. It's resistance welded. The welds are knocked off. And then the, the, the whole thing is annealed and then drawn over a mandrel to control the inside and outside size and to get a consistent wall thickness. Now, this is not pipe. Pipe is designed to carry fluids. And so the seam's usually visible. And the surface finish doesn't really matter. And the consistency of the material doesn't matter that much. This is tubing. It's designed to be welded and to carry and machined and to carry structural loads, which is exactly what we're going to do with it. We're going to turn the inside and the outside, probably the outside first, then set it eccentric to run in the chuck and bore the inside and face it to length. Let's go over to the lathe and get started. So the tubing I have faced on one end, and I want to put that against the jaws here in the three jaw chuck because I want to make sure that I have a clean face on the other side to start with that's perpendicular to the bore. Oh yeah, I gotta turn to the left because I'm checking out from the inside. Get this on here. Get a good bite because we're gonna do some machining on this. Now I've got a carbide tool here in the lathe and I'm gonna run this, I think around, let's see, what speed? I think I'm gonna run it around 720 RPM. And that should put us on a three inch part up into a good surface speed for carbide. Okay. First thing I'm gonna do is just face the front to make sure it's completely true. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I want to take a chunk of the outside of this down and I want to go probably an inch and an eighth. That's about that because the part's ultimately going to be 900 thou and so this way I can have a section that's cleaned up enough that I can, I can work with it and cut it off. I'll just put a mark here at an inch and an eighth. and then come back here and get ready to take a cut. Now, right now I'm set to take five thousandths per revolution. So let's try taking 20 thou depth of cut and see how that does. Okay, that's breaking chips and the surface finish looks really good. Well, it did. Yeah, the surface finish was beautiful and then it just blew up. Did I chip it? Maybe, let's turn that insert around. Okay. And let's just take another 20 thou because that was doing really well at first and let's see what happens.
Okay. Well, let's see where we are on diameter. Let's see, we are at about 932. So 2932, and we're headed for 2762, which means you take 170 thousandths off the diameter, which means we need to take 85 thousandths off the radius. Let's just take it, let's see, I want my last cut to be 20 thou. So let's go ahead and take 25 to start, and then go down in increments of 20 and try to hit the last one. So this will be 25. This will be 20 more, which will be 45. Okay, let's take 20 more, which will give it make a 65. Measure and just be sure we know where we are. Don't want to overshoot. So we're at about eight twenty two and a half. Headed for four eighty seven. Three thirty five to go. That doesn't make sense. So this is two eight twenty two minus where we're headed, which is two seven sixty two, which means we have sixty thousandths to go, which means we need to take thirty thousandths per side. So I'm just going to dial in. I'm gonna do it in two cuts of 30. 10, 20, there's 30. Let's take this cut and see how that does. It's leaving a good surface finish and it's breaking the chips. Let's measure for the last cut. It's like 762. Hmm, that's the target dimension. I keep getting confused with the radius. I need to get the DRO on this thing for sure. 750, 60, one and a half, 762. And that is exactly our target. Well, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. It's at least easier. OK, 
Okay. I'm going to take the burr off of the inside of this, not because it matters, but just because I'm gonna be handling it and I don't want it to be sharp. And then on the outside here, I think I'm just gonna to touch it with a file. This is an old school Nicholson made many, many years ago when they were still made in the US. eBay find. And yes, that is a 3D printed handle. Okay, we're to size on the outside. Next thing we need to do is bore the inside, but it needs to be eccentric. So can't do that on the three jaw. We need to push it out of uh, true on the four jaw and run it there. So since it's chucked on the inside, I tighten it to loosen it and there we go. That's the part. Carbide leaves a very nice finish when you can run it fast and deep. Okay. Now I have the four jaw chuck in the lathe, and it's time to dial this in to run eccentric. First step is just to get it to fit. centered now I'm gonna to try to make sure it's clear against the back. Good. Now let me get a dial indicator and let's dial this in to not run true. Hopefully we'll be able to reach this. Hopefully I can get this in a place where you can read it too. Looks okay. Okay, that's gonna clear. Okay, so let's get a zero set. So that's the low spot, the zero. Now we need to run it out a total of 158 thousandths. So there's 150, we're running almost 200. So we need to bring that back in. So there's the zero. I'm gonna release from the low side a little bit and push it back down from the high side. Now the thing to remember when you do this is that everything gets exaggerated. Everything gets multiplied by two, every move you make. So, and I have to reset the zero, and there's 100, and it looks like 68. So, I need to take 10 thousandths out of this, but because it's eccentric, I need to take five thousandths in one direction. So, slightly loosen that, slightly loose, tighten over here. Now remember, we have to reset the zero every time. It looks like we took about three thousandths that time. 162. Okay, so we need to move it about two thousandths. Let me see how much I can move it just by tightening the high. And again, have to go back, reset the zero. Not enough. In fact, I think I moved it the wrong way. So that's the high side, which means I need to bring it back to the low side slightly. Loosen that. Tighten here. Before we get too excited, let me just make sure I have all these other jaws tight before we start dialing it in. Okay, so now back on the zero. 
that's the zero, 158 and a tenth or two. Check that's zero, 150, just over an eight, over 58. I am totally happy with that. That is gonna be entirely suitable. Just for kicks and giggles here, let's make sure that we're still running true on the, on the face. It's like about a thou, thou and a half. That's gonna be just fine. It's just a belt drive. It just needs to visually not look like it's out of whack. And that will be good enough. Okay, now we need to bore the inside. Let me grab a carbide boring bar. And we'll start with that. And then we'll probably switch to high speed steel as we sneak up on this. So I have dropped the speed here to 560 RPM. Make sure I'm adjusting this on the low side because if I do it on the high side, then I'll spin it around and it'll crash. See how this looks at 560. I can live with that. Okay, now let's take a cut here. I'm gonna try, I think, 15 thousandths and just see how that runs, because it is interrupted. That seems all right to me. Since we're gripping this on the outside, I can go as deep as I want as long as I don't go through. Okay, so let's try taking 20. See how that looks and feels. Because I don't really want to be here all day, but I also don't want to knock the part out. Now, until we get this actually running true in the center now, then there's no point to uh, measuring until we get the center of the bore round. Take another 20. have to make up that entire 158 eccentric that we put into it. We're trying to take that back out of the inside. And every once in a while you hear a little crunch and I cringe when that happens. It's the chips inside coming around and getting caught between the cutting point and the part as the eccentric closes. Get some of those out of there. Yeah, we've still got a ways to go. So I'm gonna take another 20. And of course, there's a great deal of spring in this tool. The whole stack up is moving. compound on this lathe isn't the most solid thing in the world. I may make some changes to it in the future to make that better. Now let's take another 20. 
Cuts are getting longer, but the chips are breaking, so we're doing okay. Another 20. Not quite clean it up, but we're getting pretty close. We'll stop after this one and see where we are. Now, once again, we haven't cleaned up completely, but I want to measure and just see how close we're getting because I don't want to overshoot. Okay, and again, we're shooting for 487, two inches 487. And let's see where we are. We're at two inches, 375. Which means we ultimately have 112 to go on the diameter, which is only 56 on the radius. So I'd like to land that one pretty close um, to being right on on the last cut so that we can get a good surface finish on it. So, I don't think I want to go clear to 25, but if I take, so if I got 56 to go, that's 18 and a half times three. So let me take two passes of 18. 10, 18. cleaned up and the surface finish in there I would say is acceptable. So I'm going to take a measurement carefully and see where we are and then look at taking the rest in two passes. Okay we are currently at four eleven. Take another measurement. And that's about the same thing. We're right about 411. And we're headed for 487, which means I need 38 to go. And if I want to take that in two passes, it's 19 thou a piece, which is exactly what I was expecting. So let's take 10, 11, 12. Let's take 19. And of course, we're starting to string as we get to the last pass or two. I don't know how the lathe knows. I 
I do not know how the lathe knows I'm almost done so it can start messing up the uh, chip formation, but it does. Okay. Four. 47. Yep, 447 on the dot. And we're trying to go to 487. Okay, according to all my calculations, which I did on the piece of paper behind me, um, I need to take 19 thousandths to bring this exactly to size on the motor. I think I'm going to just dial that exactly. The motor's not perfectly round, but that will get us close enough, and if I have to just scratch the inside with a high-speed steel tool or something, I will, but I think this is gonna put us right on. This is the finish cut, so it knows to bunch up all the chips and scrape everything up. And as usual, the inside bore, that's not super pretty, but it will do, and it's gonna be clamped on the motor. No one's gonna be able to see it. Now, let's see if the motor fits. Now the challenge here is that the motor's not actually round, it's just very close. Let me take the burr off here if there is one. Okay, let's measure and see exactly where we ended up. It's like 484. We're looking for 487, but I was seeing the motor around 485. So we really need to take like maybe a thousandth off. Let's switch over to a high speed steel tool. And that means of course, we're gonna have to touch off and dust this thing. And we're gonna have to slow it way down as well. In fact, I'm gonna take it as far down as this lathe will go, which is 150 RPM. So let's check that real quick. We're talking about two point, two and a half inches about, and two and a half inches, if we take it down to 150 RPM, is gonna be around 100 surface feet per minute, which is a little bit slow, but 300 would put us at 196, which is probably acceptable. Let's go ahead and take it back up to 300 just to give us the best chance at a decent surface finish we can get. Okay, that's 300 RPM.
So I need to pull this out and just barely touch. I'm just going to dial 1,000 here, just because I think it's about the shallowest cut I can take. Get some cutting oil in here, and we'll see what we get. Okay, we're just taking tiny little curls. I'll just watch as we go to the bottom because I can't judge off of the body of this one because the bars, the bars are different length. See if we're any closer to fitting. Again, it's tough because the motor's not round. I'm going to go ahead and take one more thousandth. see where that got us. Expecting this one to go in. Oh boy, that is so close. Let me make sure we don't have a burr. Yeah, it's starting. Let me uh, put a little bit of emery in the bore there. It's very close, but I think I'm going to have to take another thou. I 
I had not anticipated that the motor wouldn't be round, but it's not, so it's close. Maybe five thou out around. that up a little bit and I think we're in business. the grid out of there. Okay, there's no grit, there's no burr. I bet we can get the motor in now. There we go. And there's the tiniest little bit of play depending on which direction you go again because the motor's not round. But when this clamps down in the fixture, that should take up easily. Okay, that's done. Now the next thing that needs to happen is this needs to be uh, cut off and faced to 900, what's the thickness here, 907. I don't think there's any way I'm gonna cut this off. This stuff is so stringy and so sticky. There's no way I'm gonna cut this off in the lathe with a parting tool. So I think I'm just gonna do it at the bench with a hacksaw. I could do it in the bandsaw, but again, there's almost nothing to hang on to. So, unless I got really creative. Let me see if I can get creative. Okay, I spent a little bit of time thinking about it and I got creative. Here's what I came up with. I've got the part and I mounted it in the three jaw chuck from my lathe and then clamped the three jaw chuck into the bandsaw so that I've got the cut in the right position. So the part will clear the lathe jaws and should slice off just the eccentric. And now we'll see if this was really smart or really dumb. I'm sure it's one of those. Okay, we have the eccentric uh, fresh off the saw, so we got a nice saw cut here. I'm gonna mount this up. I've got the three jaw chuck back in the lathe. You didn't really wanna see me swap that out again, did you? No, of course not. So I'm gonna chuck it from the inside just cause the inside's not gonna ever be really visible. So if there's some marks on there, no one will care. Now this is gonna run a little bit eccentric, but again, all I'm trying to do is face off the outside. So it should be fine. And I'm not gonna take a huge bite of this just cause I don't wanna put deep marks in it and I really don't want to um, distort it very much. Make sure we're actually tight all the way around here. I think we are. Now I've got this bumped back up to 720 RPM, just try to get some surface speed and hope to get a decent surface finish with the carbide on this. Let's see how it runs. It looks wobbly, of course, because it is. Now let's see if I can get a face on that and then measure it.
cleaned up. Nope, still got some socket to go. And still a little bit more. So far, so good. Let's just get an idea where we are. Caliper dimension will be fine for this. 1025, just gotta check it around. 1025, 1025, good. That means we've got the thing in there straight. Let me get a dial indicator so we can dial it right down to dimension. So let's just touch this off and zero the dial indicator. Okay, there's zero. Okay. And we know that right now we're at One o two five, and we're trying to head for nine o seven, which means we need to take a hundred and eighteen thousandths. Let's take twenty and see what that looks like. I can live with that, 40. See where we are. Nine twenty five. Nine twenty five. Nine twenty five. And we're headed for nine oh seven. So we need to take eighteen thousandths. Let's do it outside the park. There's 18. Make sure we're clear. And this should be the last pet. Nine oh seven. Nine oh seven. Great. Now let's clean up this horrendous mess here. We pushed over on the inside. Really rolled a burr over something amazing in there. You know, this thing's running more or less true. I think I'm gonna use a tool for that.
good. I'm gonna take just a tiny bit more though. Okay, the inside's good. Now the outside's got a burr. I'm gonna do that with a file, but since this is running eccentric, I'm gonna do it by hand. Okay, let's clean that up a little bit. Some abrasives. It feels great. In fact, I'm going to flip it around and do the other side. Okay. That's that. The last thing I want to do is I want to actually mark the high and low points on this because I'm ultimately going to have to slit it. And I want to make sure that I'm slitting it in the right place and aligning it with the saw in the right place. So I want to put, I just want to mark the edge here at the high and at the low point. And I will do that with the dial indicator. There's the low point. I'm going to just make a mark.
It doesn't have to be perfect, but it'd be nice if it was. Okay. That's going to be close enough. Now I'll take it over to the bench and put a little scratch in it. Well, that is the eccentric more or less complete. Um, there's, uh, these are the marks that I put on it. You can just barely see the little scratches. I'm going to go ahead and extend those out and make a nice clean line so that I can see it later. I'm going to ultimately want to split it along the scratch on the thin side. And over on the thick side, I may want to put in a pin to make it easier to move, just depending on how easily it rotates. I'll actually slit this later. For now, I'm going to keep it together because I'm ultimately going to need to machine a pocket in the motor clamp for this to slip into. And I'm not sure if this is going to spring a little bit one way or the other when it's cut. But either way, it'll be easier to have this be a round diameter that I can fit to the motor clamp before it's cut. And then I'll cut that later. So just in case it wasn't abundantly clear, this goes around the motor. And then the motor clamp grabs around this. And so then by rotating this, by rotating this ring, the motor can be moved closer or further from the spindle pulley by about 10 millimeters. The distance, the offset from center is about five millimeters. So the total distance that this can move is about 10 millimeters and that allows adjustment Allows the pulley, to, the belt to come on and off, but then also to adjust the tension on the belt. And in case you saw blood earlier in the video and you were worried about me, uh, don't be. That is the tiny little scratch that it came from. I just didn't notice it, so it spread all over my hand before things started getting slippery. That's it for today. Please give me a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing and comment below. Also, please take a moment and click the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified of future videos. Thank you for watching.